With the national hunt season now at full speed, we came along to visit Willie Mullins here at Sutton to see how his preparations are going for the Christmas festivals. Willie, the season's just getting rolling now. I suppose the rains have come and the Willie Mullins battalions have come out, but you're kind of waiting for the rains to come. Yes, uh, I mean, we were traditionally late, but this year, later again, and I was wondering, you know, were we getting too precious about our horses? But you know, walking up to the gallop every morning, the, the ground was still firm. We hadn't got the rainfall. And then looking at the weather statistics, it said it was the driest November on the, well, in Dublin or the East Coast since 1942, you know. So I said, OK, we're not gone mad yet. And, uh, you know, we, we haven't just been pulling out horses, but it's coming now, the, uh, and, and the horses are starting to come out. So we're uh, easing the pressure a little bit here. But, you know, we're so far backed up with maidens and novices and owners wanting runs, we want runs. Um, you know, it's, and it's the way it is, but um, hopefully now we'll get them all out over Christmas, New Year and into um, on the rundown for the second half of the season. Yeah. And the build up to Christmas, like, is it, is it, obviously it's a very busy time here. Is there, is there pressure on you or can you, can you enjoy the build up with all these good horses starting to come out? Well, it's a first world problem, isn't it? You know, having uh, that, that sort of pressure. And uh, yes, it's enjoyable, but then I, I can see owners' frustrations as well. They all want to run, and we're trying to keep all owners' aspirations good by keeping the horses apart. You know, it's time enough to get beaten later on in the season when the, when the good horses all have to meet in the novice events, and you know, they, they come together towards the top as you get to the spring festivals. And, um, yeah, that's sort of pressure, you know, trying to find races for the different horses and trying keeping the good, to keep the good ones apart and hope that they fire on the day. You know, sometimes they don't. You, you, you keep horse apart and say, why didn't I run the other horse if that one didn't win? Mm. Um, and it's sort of like a little game of chess. You're trying to just position everything, hopefully to come out right for March and April. Yeah, and yeah, I'm sure you, like, you have your Christmas routine. It's a, it's a work time, like it's a very busy time for you. I'm sure Christmas Day as well, people have to come in and work the horses. Oh yeah, yeah, we um, actually, Chris, if, if Christmas morning was like this, and sometimes it is, it's fantastic. That's Everyone's lovely, in yeah. great form. And we get a lot of uh, visitors riding out, you know, ex-staff who are off from their jobs. And people love to come in on Christmas morning and we try and get things finished up early so people get away to their their Christmas dinner. And, um, but. Like any farmer will tell you in the country, you know, when you have animals, you've got to look after them and that's it. And you've got to go out then after your Christmas lunch and um, feed them up and put them away for the evening. So it's, uh, and then, you know, when you have Stephen's Day the following day, one of the busiest racing days the whole year. So there's a lot of stuff has to be prepared before Christmas Day, but then the final um, touches be put on them then Christmas Eve. Yeah. And you yourself, like, did you go to Kempton or do you often go to Kempton like for Florida Pearl or for Vautour? Did you go over to Kempton for the King George? I did. Uh, not for Vautour, no. I, I've, um, I, I went over for Florida Pearl, it was fantastic, and Adrian Maguire was great on the day. Uh, you know, winning the King George, it's, it's a huge race, actually. We don't realise probably yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're in Ireland and we're in, we're, you know, in our own uh, sort of bubble in Leprestown. Uh, but King George is on, it used to be on BBC, so it went out on the World Service. And people, I remember, you know, getting sort of, um, don't know if we had text that time. <laughs> Sorry, the mobile phones were just, um, you know, with people ringing and uh, sending letters from all over the world, you know, because it's like winning the Grand National. It's the nearest thing to winning in Aintree, I think, that um, you can get. Uh, a racing, probably like winning the Derby, you know, it's a world sport event. Mm -hmm. And um, so hopefully we'll have a steering for launch for it this year and maybe maybe something else, but we'll see. And a steering for launch, how was he after his he, his departure at Punchestown the last he, day? He's fine, yeah. he's fine. He just got his legs mixed up again. He'll have to get that right at some stage. And Kempton is a tough place because of some quick jumping and turning in Kempton, but I think the track I think the ground will suit him and, you know, right-handed track will suit him and um, uh, he deserves his, I think he deserves his place in the race yeah. anyhow. 
Yeah, because he was travelling well and he, he goes so well at Punchestown. Is Kempton like Punchestown? It's different in lots of ways. But well, it's... they're both right-handed, but Kempton is much sharper. I mean, you know, it, it's fast track. Punchestown can be fast as well, but it's more galloping. Whereas Kempton, I often think, is very sharp, but the pace they go on it makes it, a, you know, if you're able to jump and gallop, you've got a great chance. Yeah, and three miles right-handed, good to soft ground, that should be close enough to... Yeah, by to coastal path, that should, you know... I think stamina is no problem. Yeah. I would prefer if the ground was soft, you know, sometimes. I think the, the, the long range forecast is not for much rain, so whatever's in the ground now we'll probably have to do. And Janadel ran a big race in the John Durkin as well, didn't he? He did uh, run a fantastic race, and I think going out to three miles won't be any harm. Now, he did run in the Albert Bartlett as a novice, and we said that it might have been too far for him. Um, you know, but these horses get stronger and stamina improves with age, so that's a debate I'm going to have to have with um, Connections owner and manager and probably jockey as well, so we'll, we'll see. They, you might, don't, they yeah. might just prefer to stay at home, which is fine by me as yeah, well. Yeah, and Alaho, who was so game in winning it, he's, he's set for a little break now, is he? Yeah, um, I'm not keen to bring him back unless he starts bucking and jumping around the place. Um, I'd rather just just wait, I think. Yeah. Give him a longer break. He looks, looks, you know, he's he's done everything right. He had a, he had a hard. I thought he had a hard race there for his first race of the season. So I'm going to give him longer. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mellon and Kenboy, who both ran such big races in the Savills Chase last yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. They they ran a cracker. They probably cost one another the race in the end. But um, what can you do? I I can see where both jockeys were. At least they kept different sides of the track in Leprestown and they tried not to take each other on but when a horse is running and jumping with you and especially when you're on a stair you, you don't want to stop them because if you're gaining length over over jumps you don't want to give it away and um, Ken Boy will definitely go there. I'm just questioning what I'm going to do with Mellon. I've got to find a way to, you know he's been second in Cheltenham I think four years running two very good horses in very good races. How can I get them to win? Um, what can we do? Do we, do we change riding tactics? Do we change jockey? I, I don't, we have to do something different. And I'm toying with the idea of maybe coming back over hurdles for the stairs hurdle. Uh, you know, it's just going in there on the back of my head somewhere anyhow. And um, he worked very well yesterday. I was very pleased with him, so. At least he's on, on the right track going into Christmas yeah. and um, haven't got him in any hurdle races, but um, we could, we'll find one after Christmas maybe or something. We, we, we'll see. I, I'm just going to put a lot more thought into him. Right. That's interesting because he was, he was so close to winning the Savills last year. Like if he'd yeah. jumped the second last a wee bit better, he might, have, he might have stayed in front for longer. That's right. You probably convinced me. <laughs> 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 so yeah, uh, you and know, he ran a big race in the John Durkin as well, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. So he's he's just you know there's a big one in him somewhere, and um, you know maybe must have a word with Patrick now. We have I haven't spoken to Patrick about it yet, and you know he might he might just say something to me about the race last year, like what you have said, and and we'll say yeah, we'll just stick to that and hope that he gets the rub of the green this time around. Charge is he on track again for the Matheson hurdle? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he seems to love Leprestown at Christmas. Um, it doesn't seem to run the same sort of race at the Dublin Racing Festival, but um, if he can produce his run at Christmas, you know, he, it, uh, it's all to play for. Uh, and why is that? Because like, he's, he's so good at Christmas and he hasn't managed to put it together yet at the Dublin Racing Festival. Is it the change in track or the different time of year? It, or what it is could it? be the change in track. It could be uh, that I give him too much of a break after Christmas preparing for the other race because you always assume a horse is very fit. Maybe he's one of those horses that needs to be got fitter. But then I, I'm afraid if I do that, uh, well, you know, I, you're, you're always keeping March in mind. And... Um, you know, he runs a great race in Cheltenham every year. And, um, you know, so I, I, don't, I don't want to change too much. Maybe, maybe we won't run him in the Dublin Racing Festival this year. You know, we'll have to see, but sometimes horses have a habit of taking that decision away from you. Maybe he'll get a stone bruise before Christmas and won't run there, and we have to prepare him for the other two races. So, and then on to Punchestown. Um, 
and that's hoping that he stays right the whole time. You know, he's a very sound horse, very mm. good horse. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's one thing I think a lot of people don't appreciate, to have sound horses that you can gallop and jump and run with every day of the week. Look at um, Under So. You know, it's only when he's retired and you have a few horses, maybe like Shaq and Poursois, who has brilliant ability, but just a little less, well, a good bit less fragile. You know, so it's... Um, to have the toughness as well as the ability is a huge attribute in any athlete. Yeah, yeah. Just, and just staying on the hurdle for a second, Saldier and Echoes and Rain, they're both in that as well. It's yeah, both of those ran disappointing. Um, Echoes and Rain in the Morgiana. Um, I felt needed the run, needed a faster pace. Uh, the race didn't suit the tactics. Um, well, the horse just, I think she was just too free and fresh. That run under her belt now, it'll be a faster pace in Leprostown. That will suit her. But she still has to come up that 12 pounds to a stone to get into that top league. She was a brilliant novice, but to get into the, the top league uh, is another thing. And then Saldier didn't fire at all, but um, when he was coming out of the parade ring that day in Fairy House in the Hatton's Grace, he banged into the rail with his hip and probably shouldn't have run, but you know, they brought him down to the start and he, he jogged up and down for the vet and he was fine, but he obviously you could see from early on in the race he wasn't going anywhere. And that obviously, uh, you know, that, you know, he's probably just not a hardy horse either now. And you must remember Salier had an awful fall as a novice in Nace mm -hmm. and, you know, he broke his jaw, his eyes, so he, he, basically dismantled one side of his face and um, it's taken him a long while to get over that mm -hmm. and he's just over it now and then goes and bangs himself like that so probably just didn't want that discomfort. I'm hoping he'll be a lot better at Christmas and I'm going for the longer trip again. Right, for the that three miles at Christmas. Three hurdle. miles at yeah. Christmas, yeah. If that doesn't work we'll have to see where we go after that but um, I'm hoping he will, he will go down that road. Right. And just on Echoes in Rain, like you can very easily put a line through the last one, can't you? A three horse race with no pace. I think so, yeah. yeah. She just pulled and pulled and then she was jumping at 100 miles an hour. She was only going 50 miles an hour. So that, that's, you know, she was landing down in the middle of hurdles. So, you know, coming down to the next hurdle, she didn't know what to do. And she was, then she went into the, you know, it was just a mess for her. She just <coughs> hasn't the experience yet. Yeah. She's very keen. That's why I didn't go back in the flat with her. I, I want to try and... We had her head in the right place at the end of last season as novice season. But obviously coming out early like that, um, I probably should have given her, I don't know if there was anywhere to give her a run, but I should have given her a run maybe in, in Tipperary, in that hurdle in Tipperary, mm -hmm. just to get the steam out of her sail. Or the but um, we, uh, you know, we, anyhow, that's what we did and didn't work. Yeah. We, we'll hope for better this time. And as you say, she does have to improve on official ratings to get up to the top level. Yeah. But do you think she can? Do you think she has that potential? We do. We, we yeah. think she has the speed to do it. She just got to learn to use her ability at the right time. Yeah. Um, San Roi, we haven't seen him in a little while, but he's in the map. No, well. I was going novice chasing with him. And um, not sure that was what, what Connections wanted to do. We were sort of toing and froing, and then he took the decision out of my hands. He uh, got a little bruise and we missed schooling him and I just said, right, we're not going novice chasing this year, we'll go back hurling and that's, he'll go for the two mile at Christmas. Yeah, okay. Um, you have a, an abundance of talent in all your novices. I mean, it's quite incredible, the, the, talent, the talented novices that you have. Well, we, we have at the moment, because, <laughs> I, because I haven't run. <laughs> well, some but, of them have. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, you know, funny enough, you think you have great novices and then you run them and ooh. Uh, but anyhow, yes, we have, uh, we're looking down the names, you'd think, yeah. oh yeah, yeah you'd, l you'd love to have that horse. You'd exactly, that horse. yeah. yeah. And there's, there's mm. so many, like Fernie Hollow, it was great to have him back over fences the last yeah. day. Yeah, he was good. Um, Patrick had to go on with him. I don't think there was too many keen to make the running against him, which was fine, but he was very novice over the first four. And then the, the middle four down the back were taken out with the sun. But then the last four, the race started, and Patrick said once a horse came upside him, he became very professional. And, and then, of course, Rachel Blackmore 
bombed Patrick across the track <laughs> after the second last, <laughs> which was very funny. But um, uh, Patrick said it actually woke up the horse. It right. just um, uh, woke him up and he went down at the last, jumped it very professionally. And um, and do you think that, that that was good for the horse? Do you think he'll come on from that? Yeah, all that experience, that's yeah. what you need. Uh, you know, a bit of hustle and bustle in races because I think he'd only three runs before that. And, um, you know, so he hasn't got great racing experience. So Patrick was delighted that he, you know, he, he did get hustled and bustled in the race, even though it was the only one horse I think came up beside him. But um, that's all experience and that you need in, in those races. Because when you were coming on the second last in hopefully Leperstown or in Cheltenham or even the third last, there's going to be a lot of scrimmaging there and mm. you've got to have a horse that's able to mind himself and hold his patch. Yeah, because he hadn't run in a year since he'd been Bob Ollinger last year over hurdles. That's right, yes. So Did you miss him last year? Were you kind of ruining that you didn't have him? Yeah, it was disappointing, but, you know, it wasn't a tendon problem. He hurt his back, and you think, we're out, you know, he can come back, and you have a... That's the one great thing about jump racing. If you miss a year, you're like a footballer. You can come back and still get five good years out of it, and you've got a brand new player the following year. You've nearly got a brand new horse, you know, the following yeah. year. You just take your time, don't rush it. Whereas in the flat, people are always trying to do it yesterday and they run at two and three and they they want to move on. It's just, that's the difference between jump racing and flat racing. I think you can, people have, you, you have to have more patience. You learn that as you go along. And, um, but you do, you get... But you can have more patience as well. You, you yeah. can because, you know, a horse's jump career can extend over anything from four to seven years, you know. So you can, if you've got a good one and you just keep them right and give him the break when he needs one, uh, rather than rushing back, uh, you can get you can get a huge um, career out of a horse. That's interesting. And do you think it's more to do with the mileage that they have on the clock rather than their absolute age then? Oh, I think mileage is huge, yeah. yeah. Horses get fed up if they're constantly being uh, trained hard and raced hard. And, um, you know, then people have to resort to blinkers and cheap piece and all that sort of stuff. Um, but if you've got a bit of special talent, try and mind it. Yeah, yeah. Concertista, she looked good over fences the last She day. did. Um, we took a chance running her in a novice chase rather than a beginner's. But I felt she had the ability. I felt that uh, it's a nice track down in Mallow. And you know, get the experience into her anyhow. And, uh, you know, my instructions just to um, our pilot on the way out was just, you know, bring her back in one piece. And if you can win, do that. But I said, you know, you needn't try to win over the second last. She's only a beginner and you're in against horse with experience. And um, you could see Sean picking his stride going down to the last. He was under pressure, but you could see him, you know, thinking I'm going to get over this and then we'll worry about winning. And he did um, give it a lovely ride. Uh, it's difficult to do that, you know, lots of people think, okay, she has the ability, she has the figures, but experience wins out more often than not over jumps rather than on the flat. So um, you've got to get around, you've got to finish to win. That's my maxim anyhow. No point in throwing them at the second half of the last and be on the ground, you know. Yeah, and Magic Day, she's had a really strong pace as she Yeah, does. you know, she's no slouch. Yeah. And, um, you know, so it was a very good performance from horse and rider. Will we see her over Christmas, Aunt Tista? Yeah, it's, uh, it, uh, is there a mare's chase? And we could look at that race in Limerick as well. She could go there, but I think we have a mare's chase penciled in for her. Right. Uh, I, yeah, I think, did Pump Tiepi or um, the other good mare um, win uh, that, that mare's chase in Limerick? I think there is, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, Gallop de Champ, we haven't seen him this season yet either. Uh, yes, he will go to the 2-5 in Leopardstown. 2-5 right. beginners. Yeah. yeah, he's in good shape. Yeah, because that's normally a pretty hot beginner's chase, isn't it? Yeah, they are. I mean, they deserve to be around Leopardstown. Yeah, yeah Chris. And is he, has he schooled, uh, schooled much or schooled They're well? all, you know, they're, they're all jumping very well. Yeah. We're, my pilot's very pleased, Paul Tennant. So he's back getting a lot of... Um, getting a lot of uh, schooling in and, and riding in as well. He had a good good call back 
uh, the other day, you know, three rides, three winners, yeah. couldn't ask for better. So, um, yeah. was, was that like, look, Paul Tannen's a top class rider, but was it good for you and for him to get back and get, you know, three good solid wins? It, on it the was, you know, Paul was obviously dying to get back yeah. and these three rides were there. And I said, are you mad to come back to riding two beginner's chases? <laughs> Your first yeah. two rides. And he thought, you know, these, these are working well and jumping well, let's do it. And, um, and then the third one was the bonus. You know, we were hoping the first two would go very close. If yeah. not, the horse that was second would win. But um, uh, Hi Ho Phoenix, you know, that was eye opening to me because his form in bumpers had, had been middle enough. But Paul said when he saw a hurdle, he just took off. He loves jumping. He's, uh, you know, some horses go down to a hurdle and they hate it and they wonder what the hell is this thing in front of them. Whereas your man, the minute he saw a hurdle, he just wanted to jump it, you know, which yeah. is, you know, horses like Hedgehunter have that sort of uh, go about them. You know, they, they just love jumping. And, um, you know, so I'm looking forward to him next season when he goes over fences. Right. And Paul's two winners, Blue Lord and Statter, like they're obviously very exciting horses for the season ahead. Yeah. Um, Blue Lord, unlucky. Well, he fell at the the last in Cheltenham in the Supreme Novice Hurdle, when it looked like he was going to be second. So he has that sort of ability and he looks very good over a fence. Very pleased with him. Uh, Statler, by Stowaway, which, you know, we, we always think of Statler as possibly a horse as being an RSA horse or maybe um, the, the four mile chase. And um, you just wonder being by Stowaway, will he have that stamina? But um, he's older now, he jumps well. And when horses jump well, they can get much further. You know, they're not, they're getting a breather in the air nearly. So yeah. um, that, I think we'll be going down that line okay. rather than coming back and trip. Yeah, because it was on, only two miles five the last day and that, the kind of worry was maybe that he wouldn't have the pace for two miles five, was it? Well, yeah, we were sort of wondering, but right. we, what I loved is the way he jumped the last two fences, mm. just made length. Yeah. You, think, you, you thought coming to the second or the last, he was going to be about two lengths behind. He landed over the last in front and you're thinking, wow, where would that come from? So, um, and you might think, well, he could go back and trip, but I'd rather go up now. I think he, the way he jumps, um, if he can jump that effortlessly throughout a race, the more jumps in the race, the better for him. Mm. And Blue Lord, as you say, he just, he would have been second in the Supreme. Do you think he could be a better chaser than Hurdler then? Yeah. I think so. Sometimes he didn't have much regard for his hurdles. He has much more regard for his fences. And where might we see him next? Oh, uh, he's in a Christmas, whether we'll wait till after Christmas or not. We'll see how, how he comes out of his race. At the moment, he looks to be good. Mm. Might be a bit soon going to Christmas, but uh, that he's done that now, I'm not too much. I'm not in too much of a hurry. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Gerhardt, another horse that we're dying to see out on a racetrack again. Yeah, jumps well. Um, novel, or maiden hurdle over Christmas, I'm sure he'll come out. Yeah. Try and pick, pick one somewhere, uh, Leperton, I imagine, and um, he's ready for action. And what do you want? Stayed on well to win over two? Yeah, he thing. did. Um, you'd think to yourself he wants <clears throat> a longer trip. He was very green winning his bumper in Leprechaun last year. Uh, he took all day to get going in Navin, but I think he wasn't in a great position going to the second last, and then he made a mistake, and that put him totally out of position. And by the time he got going, the race was nearly over. But when he did get going, he flew. So... Uh, I don't mind, you know, I, Ballymore looks sort of, you know, that distance anyhow, two and a half miles. Uh, Could it be a three matter? Could it be an Albert Bartlett horse? No, no, we won't try that. I think yeah. connections might force me to go to Ballymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sean and Bernadine Mul Ryan, of course, sponsored Ballymore. Of course. And, um, you know, that's where our aim is this minute anyhow. So yeah. uh, I, I'm happy to do that. He looks good enough to be get an entry at this stage. Yeah, because when... Um, when he finished third in the Grade Two bumper at the Dublin Racing Festival last year, like he he was looked like he was struggling going down the back straight, and he finished off his race really strongly. Yeah, yeah. Was that down to inexperience more than lack of pace? I would say inexperience. I think he he has enough pace, but I don't know. He he just seemed to zone out going down the back stretch in 
leper stand that day and then he only got it together turning for home. Whatever happened, I don't know whether he got a clod of dirt in the face or something like that. You know, sometimes little things like that can just mm. take a horse off his game, but nothing was reported to me except that he was very green and things just came together for him at the end of the race. Yeah. Um, album photo, you've been threatening to run him and say we're going to go somewhere else rather than Tremor this season, but we still haven't seen him. Yeah, I mean, I had him in the John Durkin and the ground was fine for the John Durkin. I was going to run him and then I said, we have seven others in the race. Um, and I was getting short of jockeys and um, like I, I had three English jockeys booked and only one came over and, and I was, I didn't want to run him then and I worked him after racing. He worked very well in Pontesan after racing that day. <sighs> There's no sign of rain in Leperstown between now and Christmas. They say they're watering, but we'll have to see. Um, so Tremor would look to be on the cards and he'll probably get a good bit of work somewhere in the meantime. He's working away at home, he's fine. So. I'd, I'd rather get race experience into him. Mm. I was even toying with the idea of running him over hurdles somewhere, you know. Um, but anyhow, we'll see. We'll see. I, I, at the moment, it would look like uh, look like Tremor. Tremor again. Yeah. yeah. Tremor as well. If it if it Fair. ain't broke. If it ain't broke. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Kilcross suffered a suffered a shock reverse the last day. He did. He did. But he was beaten by a horse who went out and did it the hard way. Put it up to him. Uh, jumped out in front, made the running. Um, he was a point of pointer. When he won his point of point, there was a lot of word about for him. And, you know, what I, I thought he won it on merit on the day, anyhow. Um, so I'm hoping Kilcrot will improve. He only has to improve a little bit. And you often get beaten at the start of a season, or you often get beaten with a bumper horse by something you didn't expect. And then find out a year later that this horse yeah. is actually a machine. You just happen to run into one on the day. And maybe that's what's happened, you know. Mm. So um, Kilcrut seems fine after his run. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just proceed on with him now. What I could do is just go into novice races rather than go back for a maiden. We'll see uh, what we'll do. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, uh, but he's in good shape and he's working away. Yeah, and you were happy with him going into the race, happy that oh, he was very ready happy, to start yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing everything right and everything had worked out. So, um, like they they finished, what, 24, mm -hmm. six lengths or something ahead of the third horse? No, I don't know whether what was third or fourth, but I'm sure they have formed somewhere down the line. And if if the winner wasn't in the race, our fellow would be favoured for whatever race going to Cheltenham this year, but there you are. Yeah, so you, you just think the winner was underrated going into the race? Well, yeah. I, I think he was, you know. There was a lot of talk from when he won his point of point. He could be a real good horse. Mm. And we'd heard little nuggets about him before that as well. You know, we... we, we no, we, we didn't... We, we weren't um, looking out for him going into the race. But when we actually thought about it afterwards, we said, all right, yeah, someone said, anyway. Yeah. Well, there you are. So I think, you know, he, I'm going to give him, uh, you know, he, he did what he did on the day, and we can't take that away from him until those two horses run again, and then we'll know yeah. what was right and what was wrong. Yeah, 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 good. Uh, classical Dream looked brilliant at Punchestown back in April. Yeah, just didn't fire for me going into the Hatton's Grace, so we elected not to run. And um, we'll keep the dream alive until Christmas. <laughs> I think he's in good form at the moment, so he'll have another couple of bits of work to do. And uh, we'll go to Leverstown at Christmas. For the three, the Christmas yeah. hurdle, the three mile hurdle. Yeah, yeah good. And um, Jacqueline Persois, was he okay after Sandown the last day? He, um, he, he seemed fine. He was very sore. His hock was very sore. And the only thing we could find was that he took the chestnut off his hock. I don't know whether you know what a chestnut no. is, but it's the chestnut is a little hoof growth on the inside of the hock. Right. And it's the horse's fifth toe. Well, I don't know whether it's his fifth toe or his first toe. But um, if you take the hoof as one toe, and then you have underneath their fretlock or ankle, you have the, what you call the ergot, which is another little hoofy growth. 
Big and education that's for me here. Second toe. And then I'm, I think the two splint bones, which have disappeared altogether, but they give a lot of flat horses trouble and, and some young horses trouble. They're third and fourth toes. And then the fifth toe is the um, chestnut. And he sliced that off. And so that'll be like a long distance runner losing a big toenail, I'd say, right. um, in a race. And do you know when it happened in a race? In the race? I, I don't, yeah. I don't. But obviously it happened before the, the fourth, I'd say. Um, or he was probably only feeling it then. Sometimes something happened, right. adrenaline kicks in, and then after, uh, but he didn't jump going down the back. I thought he'd yeah. make a length or two at every fence going down the back, and he didn't. Yeah. And the horse looked in fantastic form over there. Dermot, who rides him, said he was, travelled well, everything everything happened right. And they looked a picture on the day. And the only thing we can come out of with that is that that's the only bit of soreness that he had. So. But it's a, listen to you, it's a pretty significant incident to happen. If it's like losing a toenail, you're not yeah. gonna want to jump over a barrier if you're missing yeah. a toenail. I mean, some horses, I'd say on the so could do that. <laughs> He'd probably lose a leg and he keep galloping. <laughs> but um, then there's some horses are not like that. You know, as I said, Saldier got his little bang going out of the parade ring. Mm. And this fella got, this happened somewhere in the early part of the race. And that's all we can think of that. Maybe he just felt, because Patrick said he was on level behind. He said he wasn't, he was, and um, you know, just his motion over the, over the fence and the way he was landing, mm -hmm. you know, he was going, he didn't want to, he didn't want to stretch off behind, which is his forte, that he would stand back anywhere. And he should have at those downhill fences and he didn't. So there was something going on behind and that's the only thing we could find that was wrong in either of his hind legs. Yeah, well, it, it was something because uh, the railway fences, which he seemed to be meeting on a good stride, especially yeah. the first of them and the third one, he just seemed to want back another off, extra yeah. stride. Yeah, and he galloped out through one fence down there as, as well, just, he didn't want to use that hind leg anyway. Mm. He's okay now, is he? Yeah, he's fine on the gallop. Uh, worked yesterday, so he's good. Will he run over Christmas? He will, yeah. He didn't have much of a race there, <laughs> yeah, I think. So, um, yeah, he'll uh, run the two-mile race. And he likes he likes Leopardstown too. Mm. And so. you'll run him and an Ergamine there then, will you? That's a possibility, yeah. 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 As an Ergamine, he was good the last day as he well. He was very good, come out of the race well. So we'll see, uh, I think there is a race in Kempton as well, isn't there, a two mile race? Maybe, yeah, maybe we'll split grade them up. two I think, isn't it, the Desert Orchid? Yeah. yeah, we might split them up, we'll have a look at that. So he might be on his travels. Yeah. yeah. And just on Shaq and Persuala, because two disappointing runs were the two occasions on which he's raced Traveled. in England. Yeah. yeah. One was right hand, one was left hand, so mm. we can't say that, yeah. And we sort of blamed ourselves a little bit too in Cheltenham that we didn't make enough use of him uh, on the day. So when we came back to Pontchartrain, we did. We made a point of doing that, and it worked. You know, so we'll have all that. Hopefully, put it right someday. And back to your earlier comment, he's still a likely race horse, isn't he? Because he's he a is, fair yeah. bit off. Yeah, and you know, he looks he looks brilliant. I was just looking at him, and he could chat with Dermot just or yeah, yesterday morning in the gallop, and he, you know, he looks a picture. So. Hopefully he can produce a grade one performance again for us. Mm. And on, on Ergamin, like, are you excited about him? Do you think he could go right to the top? Well, it looked like that last year. You know, he's come back this year, did what he had to do down in, and he had, I mean, that, that was a hell of a race. There was no hiding place mm, in that race. took him on early, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. And they got into a battle the whole way down the back, you know, and. We were having our first run, which gave him every opportunity to blow up and not be able to race. And he just shrugged it off. And you could see from a long way out that he was traveling well. So that shows the type of ability he has. And is, is OK on better ground and going left-handed? Well, I mean, winter better ground, yeah. Um, I don't have any worry about him going left-handed. Has he ever raced list? Oh yeah, he yeah, beat, then, right? beat Captain Guinness left hand. Yeah, it's not something I've ever worried about. Yeah. Um, so he's a big, heavy horse. I wouldn't have run that. We didn't run him in the autumn, but you know, I never mind good ground in the spring because it's soft underneath and forgiving underneath. So and they're fit as well. Mm -hmm. They can take it. A big difference. Yeah. 
Just on Christmas as a whole, Willie, like you've got a obviously massive team going into Leopardstown, Limerick, Down Royal, maybe yeah. Kempton as well. You had a really good four days last season. Are you kind of looking forward to it or feeling you need to deliver or how do, how do you It's regard? a bit like that, dreading it in one word, yeah. Um, yeah, because we have such a nice team, it, it's, it brings pressure, it brings um, expectation. And if you don't, if the expectation isn't realised, then people are saying things are wrong. And, you know, they're all horse races. They don't write the cheque on the way up to the race and give them to you and, and go home. You have to go out and and fight for it and not everything works and it's like the weekend we had there with Inergamine, Fernie Hollow, um, Alaho and Shaq and Poursois, you know, I could with four massive horses going into the races and you, you think to yourself if you have four certainties, you know, two are going to get beat, so sort of um, three of them won anyhow and um, but of course Shaken was the first one and you're wondering, oh God, what's going to happen with all the others because they haven't had a run but I think we'd five winners that weekend, and I think five of them hadn't had a run, you know, so to me, to us as a whole in the yard, we were very pleased that our horses that hadn't had a run are able to come out and be competitive, that they're not needing a run. And we're hoping the same maybe for Christmas, you know, because you're taking on horses that have had two and three runs in the autumn, but you're just hoping their ability uh, can show through. And I think, it's like um, it's like any big team, you know, that have uh, a weight of sort of good results behind them. Um, mm -hmm. When you don't fire, then it's a failure. So it's um, it's a relief when they do fire, not not a celebration, yeah. you know. So it's. Uh, the, the ones we celebrate, I think, are the ones that win at 25 to 1, <laughs> don't expect. And, um, you know, they're the, they're, the, they're the real good days. But, uh, it, you know, racing is, uh, jump racing has just changed so much in the last 20 years, I'd say. The teams of horses that people have now that were never there before. And people, it's a game that seems to be growing in popularity. The, with with the participants any with owners, I mean, there's, you know, there's a half a dozen or more, maybe a dozen people that want to have a team of horses rather than have one good horse. It's, um, it's very good for jump racing. But, but that's it, isn't it? The greater, the greater the level of expectation, the more sense of relief when it actually happens, as opposed to if, there's, if the level of expectation is quite low, then it's... It's joy, it's yeah. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, Really, a lot of it is relief, and fan it's fantastic when it comes. But um, uh, but but when the four days are over, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll celebrate. Then the joy will come out. Maybe yeah. With uh, hopefully we'll have a you know we'll have a good Christmas.